So my name is Calder Zwicky and I'm an assistant director in the education department and I oversee teen programs and community partnerships. The very first thing I did was create this class called Shred Thrash Carve, the visual language of skateboard culture. And it was this free art class for teens. And we came up with this like really weird syllabus that was like very skateboard focused, but also open enough to the idea that a lot of the kids coming in wouldn't be skateboarders. So it was about like, skateboard graphics, but also different techniques that skateboard connected artists have used. Um, we brought in Mark Gonzalez as a guest speaker, which was crazy. Um, he came in with two circle boards completely taken apart and he had the kids break into two and then they did a race to put the whole circle board together. And then as soon as one of the circle boards got put together, he just hopped on it and started skateboarding around this gallery space. And everyone was like, oh shit, there's like artwork over there. And you know, he doesn't care. He was just doing his thing. He stayed after and he did a drawing for every single kid in this class, signed them. Like it was really, that was really beautiful. When you're looking in a still magazine, why I really still love print publications, you're seeing this obstacle, you're seeing this space and you're seeing a still image of someone and your mind has to understand and fill in where were they doing leading up to that and where did they come off and what happened afterwards. I started to look at how large tricks were getting and how big these kind of obstacles were getting and how small the skateboarder was getting and I think that's something that's very like kind of indicative of skateboarding today and how far things are progressing like the idea of the style was becoming less important and the idea of the object they were skating seems so important and then i started to think about the idea of just how skateboarders see the landscape how skateboarders look at the spaces in our cities and how much you do focus on things like stairs and rails and things like that and that the skateboarder itself if you look at a cover we own like 25 stairs like that as a cover without the skater in it, it makes sense. Like it, it, it still makes sense as a skateboard cover because you're just like, someone's gonna do something to this. I think Jaws and the, the, the largeness of what he's been doing, the insanity of what he's been doing is like, this is a Jaws cover, this is a Jaws cover, and I don't have it anymore because I sold it, but the dumpster, that's a Jaws cover too. And that was the first one I ever did. Just the minuscule nature of where he is in the covers and the immensity of the landscape was just like, that was the whole, the whole start of it. Jaws covers are really easy to do. Skateboarding is really good at telling you what's whack and what isn't. And it's kind of, there's always a constant push and pull in a conversation about that. But there's this like level of quality and there's this like realness that kind of goes through it. One of the things that's really difficult is when you try and take these things that exist really beautifully in this kind of like ecosystem and try and bring them into the squareness and the rigidity of museum systems or gallery systems. Like in the early 80s when they tried to take hip hop and graffiti and like move it to the gallery system, it just fails, you know what I mean? And I think the same thing can happen a lot with skateboarding too. It's like, what does an institution want out of skateboarding? And I think skateboarding is always really um, cynical, smartly, about what people want out of it. When you're bringing skateboarding into a space, you have to be very open about the idea that it is, at its best, very messy, and it should stay very messy, and it should stay very um, removed from that rigidity.